We are continuing our journey on problem 62A. We have solved part A. We've done a high-low method. We've solved part B. We've done a scatter plot. Now we're on to part C. We are going to solve it in Excel. So here's our data. Oops, this looks a little bit off. There we go. Uh, here's our data from our question. And I'm going to tell Excel, you know how we just did a scatter graph? I'm going to tell Excel, Excel, please do a scatter graph. So I say insert, charts, scatter. There it is. I don't need a chart title here. We're not interested in that at this time. And you know what? This looks pretty familiar. This looks similar to the scatter graph I just drew a moment ago. If we scroll down here, we can see my scatter graph. Uh, the points are, you know, similarly located, not identical to what Excel is providing me. Um, okay, well, we want a line. So I right click one of those points and I say, add a trend line, give me a line. And you can see the line stops at 90, like that's, that's our lowest, that was our low month was 90. I wanted to go backwards 90 periods because I wanted to go to the uh, uh, Y axis. Wow, it's right on 400. Boy, my numbers were off in my scatter then because I thought it intercepted at 330, you can see there. So I was not that good at drawing this line of best fit. Uh, my visual inspection line will be pretty far off. Anyway, 400 is a, a very accurate intercept. In fact, I don't have to visually inspect this anymore. I don't have to look and say, okay, 400 and it looks like 1200, 100 is a good point. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is say, hey, Excel, tell me what's the formula? What's the equation here? What's the y equals mx plus b? I click that. Excel tells me the y equals mx plus b is, trying to move this around. There we go. Can I make it bigger, I wonder? Not really. It's not, not wanting to get bigger. Anyway, you can see it there. Uh, y equals 8.1 plus 396.5. It, y equals 8.1x plus 396.5, roughly. So that would be my answer, you know, using a least squares regression, using Excel to do it. But if you had done a least squares regression just by hand or by using your calculator, uh, this is the answer you would have arrived at if you didn't round it all. Um, that's the answer. Now, that is a much better cost formula than the scatter graph I drew. Although, you know, we're not that far off. 8.7 was mine. I believe the Excel one was 8.9. And let's just look again. Come on, you, there we go. Oh, 8.1, pardon me. And if I go back up to high-low, you can see high-low was even further off than the scatter graph. Scatter graph uses, so the, the advantage of a scatter graph is it uses every data point. The disadvantage is human eyes have to draw the line. Uh, the advantage of the high-low method is there's not really a human element. You're just calculating numbers, so it takes the human element out. The disadvantage is you only use two data points. You use the highest and the lowest. The least squares regression kind of best of all world solution. Uh, that's what you would use if you were working at a company. But that said, in our tests, or if you're looking for something quick and easy, high low or scatter graph are certainly fair game in my class to be tested. I don't test least squares regressions because I don't have students sitting in front of Excel in my class. Let's look at D. D says, are there any other factors other than the number of packages shipped that may contribute to variation in shipping costs? Certainly. Fuel costs, right? If fuel costs are way up, your shipping costs are going to rise. Demand for shipping, I'm guessing around Christmas, shipping it costs more because there's so much strain on a logistics system. So maybe demand for shipping is higher. The average weight of the packages shipped, I mean, assuming they're not all the same size, right? If the order sizes are bigger, your shipping costs will be higher. So those are all things that might uh, increase the cost of shipping. And again, you know, students could suggest a lot of other things that would be true here. All right, we've made it. If you hung in there for all these videos, thanks for hanging in there. I hope these videos are very useful for you and it's useful for me if they're, if they're good for you. I hope you're not shy about hitting those buttons for me. Have a great day, everybody. I'm chasing, I'm chasing 100,000 subscribers. I'm on my way. I think it's gonna happen and I hope you will uh, add yourself to that list. Have a great day. Bye for now.